Hey gang, welcome back. Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about the relationship between temperature and illumination. So, I maybe you've heard it before, but you can alter the temperature of a reaction to somehow favor illumination, and let's just dive right into it and see what we can figure out. Okay, so we know how to decide between SN1, SN2, E2, E1. So now that we have all those tools in our toolbox, let's kind of dissect what's going on in this example reaction right here. Okay, so right here, I see my solvent, DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide. We know that is polar aprotic, right? Or sorry, polar, yeah, polar aprotic, sorry about that. So polar aprotic, so we know that is definitely good for E2, SN2. And the big giveaway here I gave you the product, but we're just going to go over it, is that uh, right here, right, we have NH2 minus super good base, small base, and our substrate right here is tertiary, good leaving group, and because it's tertiary, we have a strong base, right, zero chance of SN2 occurring, and we know we have something that is really good at ripping protons off. So E2 is 100% going to happen here, as shown by the product. So let's mechanistically show what's going on here, because it's going to help explain kind of what is happening. And so I'm symmetrical here, so it doesn't matter which H I decide to rip off, but my NH2 minus will rip the proton off. As that's happening, these electrons in this bond swing down, form a double bond. I'm gonna break the octet rule unless I eject the leaving group. So we do messing with three bonds all at once, right? And we produce our alkene product. Okay, so what we don't really show here is that we actually, you know, what we're producing over here is NH3, neutral, ammonia, as well as a Br-, minus, which is going to link up with this sodium. So you don't really have to draw it, but for full clarity, right, we have the positive sodium, the negative bromine. So if we think about it, right, the DMSO doesn't participate in the reaction, so we can kind of ignore it. So we can kind of think about is that we have this one, our substrate, right, and our base on one side going to our product on the other side. So for elimination reactions, can you see how we start out with two mo molecules on our reactant side and three products on our product side? Well, like we discussed in Gen Camp Bootcamp, this is system is moving from more order to more disorder, right? We have two things over here and now we've added an extra thing that is going to be bumping into other molecules, causing chaos. So if we think about it, that is a good effect for entropy. That is good and uh, good entropic effect. So remember our conventions for signs, the delta S for this reaction will be positive, which means that is a good entropy effect. Okay, so how does this of, of relate to temperature, right? So let's look at the Gibbs free energy equation. Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So let's look at this. We see temperature in here, and this is how we're going to kind of relate elimination and temperature together. So these reactions that are happening, they're good. They're exothermic, right? And we know in terms of ex uh, enthalpy, right, we know it is, ide it is ideal that delta H is negative. Systems giving off energy, going to a lower energy state, more stable. That's what we like delta H to be. We like delta S to be positive, right? That is ideal for delta S. That means we're moving to more disorder. And overall, right, we like delta G to be negative, right? That's, that is the overall goal. Because that means the reaction is spontaneous. It will happen. That's what we like to see for delta G. So if we look at this equation, right, if delta H is negative, that's good for delta G. And if we think about this term, right, and sometimes this is confusing, this negative sign is built into the equation, right, if delta S, so we want this whole thing to be, we want a negative number to then be subtracted from a positive number, because if we had like negative 2 minus 6, positive 6, right, that would mean delta G is a negative 8. Now these aren't realistic numbers, I'm just trying to prove a point that we like an exothermic delta H, which is negative, and we like this T delta S term to be positive, because if it's positive, 
we're subtracting a positive number, delta G will just go ahead and be full on negative. So, right, since we see in elimination reactions that entropy is guaranteed to be positive due to the fact that we produce an extra molecule in the reaction, we have more disorder, we can make delta G more negative, right? Whatever delta S is going to be, it's going to be. But if we make temperature a big number, right, then this term grows larger positively, which means we're subtracting off a bigger positive number and delta G continues to grow negative. So that's why when you're dealing with elimination, it's great to crank that temperature up because you know this term is going to be positive and you can make this term larger by making the temperature higher, which means whatever your delta H is going to be, that'll, it'll be that. And then your delta G will continue to grow negatively. Okay, so we know E2, if you, if you just have the right substrate, a good strong base, it's going to go to the elimination product. Let me erase this and then I'll, I'll show you where you, this might manifest itself, where you might see this high temperature come into effect. Okay, gang, so here's one of the biggest ways you'll see temperature and elimination kind of interwoven with each other. So let's kind of dissect what's going on in this reaction, very similar to the one we just did. Same substrate, right? Tertiary, good leaving group. However, this time we just have plain old water over the arrow, arrow right? So we know tertiary, 0% chance of SN2, good leaving group. So not only is H2O going to be our nucleophile, uh, or it could be our base, but we know we're in a polar protic environment, right? So polar protic, we know that's great for solvolysis. So this is going to be an SN1 and minor E1 type of situation, right? So no matter what, mechanistically, our very first step is that the bromine is going to leave. So if I kind of draw down what's going, down, going on down here, we're going to form a tertiary carbocation. Okay, and remember, water, not the best base. Not the best nucleophile, but he's a better nucleophile than he is a base. So, we have H2O, come in, attack. We have O, H, and a plus charge. Right, and then another water is going to come by, or anything in solution is going to clean him up. Right, that little cleanup step. And you see we have our SN1 product, right? And then we know that the other situation in the minor product is gonna, here I can even draw SN1 up here. And I'll even, let me grab a color for it. We get our T-butanol, right? What we can do in addition to that, down here with our tertiary carbocation, is instead of attacking, we can pull off an adjacent H with our water. Those electrons will swing up. We will form our alkene product, our elimination product, through carbocation way, so it's an E1 product. Okay, so we've already known that was nothing new, but let's link this back to what this video is all about and the new concepts we're learning. So remember, water, not the best base. Not a great nucleophile, but a better nucleophile than a base. So right, we, we established that E1's kind of this unfortunate, forgotten about, uh, he's the middle child, right? Um, he is always in the minor situation, kind of, he's a bit of an afterthought. However, what we can do to increase our product of E1 is if we also just put high temperature, high T, high temp, right? Remember, based on what we said with the Gibbs free uh, energy equation, the high temperature, that entropy piece of that equation for, for the elimination reaction gets way more prominent, right? That reaction becomes much more attractive. So the system will make more E1 if you crank up the heat, right? So what you'll sometimes see is if this was what you were given, I would, I would probably list the E1 product, maybe with a minor SN1. Or if you were just given water, or you were given water and low T, I would go with SN1. So that's kind of how the temperature and elimination work together, right? We know elimination reactions have good entropic effects, and based on the Gibbs free energy equation, delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S, by cranking up the heat, 
the good entropy part of this equation becomes more prominent, delta G becomes more negative, the reaction is more spontaneous, the elimination reaction. So it will, it's, it's a nice little hack to make your E1 product more prominent. Okay gang, so now you're totally knowledgeable about temperature and elimination. See you in the next video.